Today's discussion is all about porting intakes, but first we've got to do one thing. That's better. So if you look back at porting our lower TPI intake, we had a lot of discussion about porting right, wrong, and how we're doing it wrong. Well, it, it spurred a lot of things. So the big thing we need to talk about here is there are essentially two types of intakes, dry and wet. A dry intake is like the TPI, the LS. Um, direct injection type systems are technically a dry style intake. Basically any system that the fuel isn't added until it's at the head or eh, just before the head, kind of like the TPI or multi-port fuel injection systems. A wet intake is much like you see on a well, carbureted system. You're dumping fuel into it and atomizing and mixing that fuel inside the intake versus the actual cylinder head or the intake tract. But this leads us to two totally different types of porting. So we're gonna start with dry intake porting, which is what we did in the TPI. So with intake tracks like this, the big thing we wanna do is essentially set it up so that it is mere smooth or glass smooth. Now, I know you're already sitting there typing in the comments saying that, no, that's wrong. That's not how you wanna do that at all. So think about this, on a dry intake, you have the throttle body, right? In that throttle body is the plenum. The plenum then go to the runners. The runners then lead to the intake. From there, fuel's added. So think about this. In water, you're burning water through a hose. Does more water flow through that hose if it's turbulent, or does more flow through it if it can just wish right through? Now the difference here, again, is in a wet intake, we're gonna use that same hose analogy, but we're gonna add soap to it. Now, if we have the soap gently adding to the water, it's just gonna kinda easily mesh and not, not combine in the way that we need it to. Now, in that same system, if you add a little turbulence, a little like pitting on the inside of the hose. This gives small eddies and spots for water to gather and soap to gather, material to gather, to mix. So think about this, you know, so in a wet intake, we're adding our fuel with our air. So it's important that before it gets to the combustion chamber, that it totally atomizes and that it does its thing like it needs to. Now, this is different because injector systems will pulse much more atomized fuel versus the dribble that you get out of the carburetor. So the porting methods for these two different types of manifolds are completely different. You need to take into consideration what your system is. Throwing fuel injection on it and you want to run that fuel injection with the throttle body with squirters in the throttle body, well then it's a different port job than it's gonna be if you're gonna have multi-port fuel system in the actual runners themselves of a throttle body system like that. You know, so you really need to consider what you're doing and, and how your combination is gonna line up for what porting method you need to use and what intake method you need to use. Obviously in the TPI world, we're using dry intakes because that's what we have. In the carburetor world, you're running wet intakes. Now, of course there are always exceptions to the rule. You know, power adders like nitrous, the perfect example. If you're gonna run an LS and then you're gonna throw nitrous in it or you're gonna run a TPI and throw nitrous in it, you're gonna wanna add some character to the intake system just so that the nitrous has a good opportunity to, to mix in the intake before getting to the chamber. But if there's anything that I missed, Comment down below and let me know. If you found this interesting, go ahead and subscribe because we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. But until the next time, check out this video right here. Have a good one and I will see you on the road.